I'm home and I love it. I'm home. I'm home where I belong. It's always nice to come home, but many Americans are at risk of foreclosure and losing their homes. Making home affordable from the U.S. government has already helped over a million struggling homeowners like these. The sooner you act, the better chance we can help you. I'm home, I'm home, where I belong. Thanks for tuning in for today's edition of Lancaster Perspective. I'm Mike Miller. My special guest today, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Dave Fay. Hi, Mike buddy. Miller. How are Good you, man? You. I'm great. How yeah. are you? You doing well? Doing oh, all right? Yeah, we're hanging in there. Oh, we're doing okay. That's good. I know they're keeping yeah. you busy and all those oh, things. Oh, my goodness. Yes. It's yes. Just, we uh, have lots of things going on. Yeah. Well, I, I could barely squeeze you in. Oh, <laughs> I know. I know. You mean so much. I just had to be here. Your social agenda. Oh, just, yeah. Uh, paparazzi lined up uh, outside. I, I noticed that when I pulled in, I was wondering about where they weren't here to see me. I knew no, that. No, 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 that was my entourage, yeah. my groupies. Well, yeah. that, that's good. I mean, that's, right. that's good. The um, uh, Dave is the uh, director of the Fairfield County Historical Parks. He's been there for 13 years. Um, before that, uh, worked as a biology teacher at Bexley High School and in Columbus for 30 years. Yeah, that seems to surprise a lot of people when I tell them I'm a biologist, not a historian. You know, well, you're not allowed to know all these <laughs> things about history, then I guess. So. But but you learn it over time, and, and it's just been uh, just been really great for me to start a second life, really. And this, I'm the one that's privileged out of this whole deal. Yeah, I, I know you enjoy it. I, I know do. that love it. The uh, first couple of times we got together on the radio and we were doing different things, you could just tell the passion that you have for the parks. Well, we department. did those remotes. Too. Yeah, we did remotes yeah. uh, at uh, Stonewall, um, Stonewall, the mill. and the Mill, and it just uh, it was it was a great thing. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, went to OSU, got his undergraduate, then went on to Virginia, got his master's degree, and came back to Central Ohio and been here ever since. I have, yep. Call this my home. I uh, spent more years here than any place else, so I guess this is my home, although I'm still considered an immigrant uh, around Baltimore area. If you live there, you got to be there 40 years before you got your green card, so. Oh, I'll yeah. have to ask Del Barr about that. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know Del. <laughs> I'll ask you about it. There's a couple, there's a, an event coming up right away. Uh, we'll get a shot of this. It's the Covered Bridge and, and Heritage Festival coming up September 10th and 11th uh, from 12 to 5. So let's see if we get a shot of this. Uh, yeah, this is our first year out with this uh, Mike starting a, a festival countywide uh, we've decided that uh, we just don't hold the corner on history even though we have 15 parks that are involved in cultural history uh, and uh, preservation of our heritage we decided there are a lot of other places too in the county as you well know uh, in downtown Lancaster alone five museums uh, with the George and the Sherman Decorative Arts Center Glass Museum aha uh -huh. I mean there are a lot of museums down there dedicated to different aspects of our heritage absolutely fascinating places if you haven't visited those yet you really must do that uh, and, and we've included other places in the county Bremen has a wonderful little museum as does uh, Pickerington Baltimore has a great museum even the village of Amanda is going to participate in this their uh, city council chambers their village council chambers have a really nice collection of early photographs from the Amanda area that are going to be featured on the 10th and 11th of September 12 to 5 both days days. Um we have some events. The Historical Aircraft Squadron is going to hold a sort of a recreation of an early USO style hangar dance, which is what they used to do uh, during World War II. You know, the troops were out in battle and they'd get a little time in the rear of the battle. They needed things to do, recreational things to sort of take their minds off the horror that they had to face every day. So the USO would draft uh, stars from Hollywood and all over the country to come fly into a base. Uh, an aircraft base, they'd clear out the hangar and a big band would usually uh, show up and they'd dance the night away to the old great big band music of the 30s and 40s. They're recreating that at the Historical Aircraft Squadron uh, Saturday night. If you come at 6, they'll even teach you a few moves, <laughs> a few dance moves, which I think I'm going to be late arriving. Yeah, I, but, I know, I will. But uh, <laughs> it would be great to go and at least listen to it. Uh, very inexpensive to spend an evening there and sort of recreate an important part of our history history. And Bremen Museum is going to have an interesting exhibit uh, that's going on at the time. The largest collection of Ice Age artifacts in the world 
will be at the Bremen Museum. I mean, this is an amazing county to live in. You know, we've talked before, Mike, about the mill, especially when you did a, a remote there, that that's the largest mill of its kind in the United States. We have uh, an Indian earthworks, an ancient earthworks, as they're called, uh, that uh, exists nowhere else in the world. It's, it's more rare than the Great Serpent Mound. Uh, it, we have a presidential wow. cemetery, remember? Stonewall. Mm -hmm, right. Well, more covered bridges than any other county in the state of Ohio. More originals. I mean, it well, just goes on and on. And one of the things about uh, Rock Mill, if I remember right, Rock Mill is the only picture that hangs in every embassy in the world? The covered bridge. The covered bridge. Right, the covered bridge, not the mill, but the covered bridge uh, is the uh, ha has a photograph, actually, that was taken that hangs in every U.S. foreign embassy of the world. And I've actually had that verified by two different people. One from, uh, where were they? I want to say Pakistan. Mm -hmm. uh, on that one and one in South America that was actually seen. And they wondered, they said, wow, this is finally the bridge. I'm seeing the real thing right, the that real. I saw in the photograph. It, it's amazing. Now, at one time, there were dinners at Rock Mill. I don't know if they're still doing We've held dinners that. on the bridge. Uh, we had a big uh, dinners last Friday at the mill. Had over 100 people. Uh, wow. They're in the mill. It was set up. It was a catered dinner, sort of a thank you for all the mm -hmm. support that uh, some have given us on that restoration effort. We're not there yet, but we're getting close. Uh, we're beginning to collect funds for the wheel, the 26 foot, 8 and a half ton mm -hmm. white oak water wheel that when it's put on there it won't won't be any mistake mm -hmm. that it's a, a, an early grist mill, 1824. And as I said, because it's such a great wheel, uh, so large in size, that makes the mill unique in the United States. There were only six or eight of those mills built. Right. This is the only survivor. And what? it brings people here. Oh, absolutely. We talked a, a, earlier um, about just the amount of time that went in to build the original mill. I mean, because people came from all over to do that. And they did. The stones that are, <laughs> I mean, they're, they're amazing. Half ton stones. Uh, the top one is the only one that turns, remember. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called the runner, and it turns at about 106 RPM. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not going to stand next to a <laughs> chunk of limestone that weighs a half a ton that's spinning that fast, because imagine the centrifugal forces mm -hmm. against that piece of rock. But yet they did. And you have something like the mill. You know, I look at this photograph that you just showed mm -hmm. uh, your viewers, and a very nice little portrait done by a young lady that lives in Baltimore. We had a little poster kind Contest and she was our winner. And you see this uh, painting, which is excellent. I mean, she's an amazing artist for a seventh grader. And uh, you you use your imagination to sort of hear the water and maybe check out the breezes and the trees and all that. But it's still rather two-dimensional. Mm -hmm. But you walk out there and visit that bridge, then you do feel the right. breezes, you do hear the water. Uh, maybe there's some unique smells in the air at that time, or the, or the mill for that matter. Mm -hmm. How do you replace an experience with your imagination? I mean, an experience is one thing. That's concrete. An imagination, you and I might read mm -hmm. the same book and have a completely different view of, uh, of what the author intends us to see as they write. But make no mistake, when you and I walk into that mill and it's in operation, we're going to feel the vibration of that building mm -hmm. shaking from the, the spinning of those stones, all of the equipment moving, uh, the belts turning. We'll taste it for sure because there will be flower dust in the air. We'll mm -hmm. smell it. We'll hear it. All of those things will impact our senses. Think of children. Mm -hmm. If you take little ones in there, what are they going to remember most? That bronze plaque that you read to them? <laughs> Here once stood? Uh, they all start like that, mm -hmm. don't they? Yeah. Here once stood. I think that's a sad statement. Mm -hmm. Not that we can save everything, and we don't need to save everything. But when you have very special places like Rock Mill or some of these covered bridges, they're not making those anymore. Right. These are things that we knew, need to preserve and hand off to mm -hmm. our offspring. And I know covered bridges are a passion for you and you've actually brought uh, oh, a, yeah. a small. This you're is your test. You're gonna, <laughs> sort of an IQ you're test. Gonna assemble this thing. We're going to get some of the crew here to do this. But. Well, well, no, no, no. I think it should be you, Mr. Miller. <laughs> Uh, so you want to take a crack at that? Sure. What, what, All right. What well, I'll tell do? you. This is the experience thing again. I can tell you how a covered bridge is built. I'm not sure you understand it, mainly because of my explanation. <laughs> not certainly a reflection of your intelligence. Thank you very much. That yeah, that's, that's debatable. I understand. But what do those look like? Mm -hmm. You know, a couple of roof panels, couple maybe. Roof panels. We don't know what this is. Uh, how about that? Truss. Yeah. Roof All trusses. All right. He named it. Oh, Truss. Yeah. Good. Yeah, absolutely. We've got a some uh, trusses here, too. They're a little bit different than those. And a few more. I better mm -hmm. hang on to those. 
and a couple of uh, pieces of bridging here. Now, we made it simple for you, Mike. <laughs> it's color-coded. Oh, well, I see. So, I still so you're not going in with your tongue hanging so now, what do we, uh, now what do we do? You know, where does this go? So, I'll, uh, so if you're going to start, this is the creek. If you're going to okay. start building a covered bridge, you have to put something in the creek so that you can get it started. You simply don't start at one end and build a bridge, right? Right. Across the creek. You've got to bridge that creek, so to speak, or put in cribbing. So let's put in a piece of cribbing. So when we... Oh, this is going to be interesting. Oh, my God. There can go. he do it? There we go. Look at that. How about You're those? making real progress today. We may go on to feeding yourself next week. Uh, let's see. Let's do this one. Well... Don't force it. Don't force it. <laughs> this is, um, you know what, folks? Um, my education at the Harvard on the Hocking has uh -huh. paid off. I know that place. <laughs> All right. Here. Now we're going to put on some decking. Okay. Tell you anything? Let's go this one. He is good. I can't see that side over there. Ah, ah. Does that look centered? That doesn't look centered to me. Uh, it's stuck. Get her centered. There we go. All right. What can we do next? When you're trying to show a child how a covered bridge is mm -hmm. built, you know, you see a covered bridge like in the photograph. You come out to Rock Mill when you see the covered right. bridge standing there. It's, it's a completely different thing than trying to figure out how these early bridge builders, who weren't engineers, in fact, I'm uh, not most an engineer. of them. We'll give you that. Most of them barely made it through the eighth grade, only because that's all that was required in those days. Look at this. He's a self-starter now. <laughs> all right. Oh, we're just, uh, we are progressing here. So these are called bents, and you have trusses. And interestingly, uh, most people don't get the idea that covered bridges really hang. The road bed is hanging. It's not supporting anything. It's hanging, and it's hanging from these trusses that are in here. We've got uh, an example right here, this vertical, which is called the king post. We just slid off of our bridge how long, here. How long would it take to build a covered bridge during the day? Not well, if today. you're Jacob Blue Jeans Brandt, remember me talking mm -hmm, about him? Yeah. He's the fellow that wore only denim. Even his church clothes were denim, three pieces. He'd buy it by the bolt, never took it off, although I remember that photograph I saw of Blue Jeans. He had a great big long beard down to here, and uh, he had sort of a stern, almost pained expression on his face, and I figured out, I guess, unless his union suit was made out of denim, mm -hmm. that maybe that chafed an itch just mm -hmm. a little bit uh, in the hot weather, but but he would probably prefabricate this bridge in his driveway out on uh, what we call 22 now, mm -hmm. was the Circleville Road. He'd probably b put all these things together out there and then haul it by wagon to the site, so he could probably put a bridge up in, say, a month's time. And if you were a bridge wow. mechanic, which means a carpenter, mm -hmm. uh, you would probably earn the sum of 35 cents a day. And that day would be sun up to sun down. There were no eight hour days, five day weeks mm -hmm. in those days. It was you worked when the weather allowed you to work and didn't when it was bad outside. So if we were to go ahead and continue with the trusses, we'll stick those in where they belong. I'm going to give you a hand on this. Because, Thank you very much. Yes. Okay, you've got two more down at your end. This is, um, there we go. Okay, and one side uh, for you and one side for me. I'll get this side, I'll uh, get that side. That's all right. So let's see, how are we doing there? Okay. Got it? There we go. Almost. We're missing one slot there and one there. Okay, now. I don't hear any applause in the background from the, the crew. I'm the moment of truth. <laughs> the moment of truth. You uh -huh. have to kick out the cribbing. You have to make sure that it's going to stay suspended over the creek now, so we have to get rid of the cribbing. So we would simply get under the bridge, knock that cribbing out, and there's your covered bridge. Wow. 
Okay. Now, what better way to show children mm -hmm. and get some understanding Absolutely. of what the different parts are, and that that was no small task to build a bridge like that. Much less to know that some of our bridges have been standing in place for 130, 140 years. We can't do that mm -hmm. with a modern day bridge. I ran into our county engineer one day mm -hmm. out by the Johnston covered bridge, and I said, Frank, how long is that new bridge you built over there on the curve to <laughs> bypass the Johnston covered bridge? How long is that going to last? The thing was the Johnston covered bridge was already, what, 125 years old. And he said, oh, Dave, we'll get 35 years out of that bridge. 35 years. As compared to 125. 125. Okay, Frank, yeah. you know you know best. So, well, they, admittedly, they don't carry mm -hmm. the weight that our modern day bridges are, are sure. required to carry. Although, you know, in Ashtabula County, where they think covered bridges are important enough to continue building new mm -hmm. ones, they just built the longest one, 630 feet long, and it does carry truck traffic. So wow. it was built to be able to do that. They can do that. The that's principle a, that's of the amazing. trust. That is absolutely amazing. I know within the, within the park system there, there are 15 different parks, and you're the only employee. I am. Now you have a great group of volunteers. I know that. Amazing group of volunteers. They teach me many things because they, they tend to specialize. Just like I was a biologist, mm -hmm. uh, specialized in, in teaching biology, that's where most of my coursework was. I have uh, volunteers that specialize in covered bridges. That's their favorite part of our parks. Other volunteers in cemeteries. We have a couple of remarkable cemeteries. Mm -hmm. Stonewall, Stonewall Cemetery is amazing. If you, if, you, if you can get to Rock Mill and Stonewall, those are, I've been to Smeck Farms, and mm -hmm. I've been to most of them. We don't right? have a lot in some of our parks right. yet. We haven't had the funds to develop. Right. Uh, those parks, but Stonewall, truly remarkable, a dodecagon, for mm -hmm. those of you who know your Latin, which means 12-sided figure. And the most remarkable thing, I'm going to use our poster here, mm -hmm. let's pretend that this is just a chunk of uh, sandstone, which is what they quarried uh, to be able to build the stone wall on Stonewall Cemetery. The, the amazing thing is, I'm going to borrow your mm -hmm. clipboard, Mike, normally joints are two pieces coming together, right? Mm -hmm. Not at Stonewall. They took one stone and actually cut it at an angle. They mitered the stone wow. to be able to turn that corner, and they had to do it 12 times. And every course of stone is slightly more narrow than the one before it. So it wasn't like they could work their tails off and get a pattern stone mm -hmm. and then cut all the rest of them the same. Every stone is different that's in that wall. And what's most amazing about that is that the stone had to actually be quarried off site because Nathaniel Wilson, who built Stonewall, was a, a very religious man, knew his Bible thoroughly. And in 1 Kings uh, chapter 6, verse 7, Solomon's building his temple. And I don't know the exact quote, mm -hmm. but what it boils down to is Solomon considered that ground to be sacred where he was building his temple. So he did not want the sound of his stonemasons, who, by the way, were free uh, they were not slaves. Mm. Solomon wouldn't have slaves mm. build his temple. So that was the beginning of Freemasonry that we still see around today. Mm -hmm. And he paid them for their labors, but they had to cut far enough away from the site of the temple so that you could not hear their iron instruments, their cast iron instruments on those stone. Then they had to bring them in one at a time and assemble the temple. Wilson did the same thing. Wow. Exactly the same thing. And what's more is as his German stone cutters, and those were usually the people who did it, the German immigrants that came mm -hmm. into the northern part of Fairfield County, the English from the south, those German stone cutters had to assemble that wall in complete silence while Nathaniel Wilson read from the Bible. And then wow. to cap it off, he brought a cedar of Lebanon from Mount Lebanon in Israel, all the way by boat. Imagine in the 1820s, 1830s, bringing a living tree mm -hmm. across the ocean, which would have been a, an incredibly <laughs> long journey, bringing it into a very early country, right. the United States, right. which wasn't very united at that time, across into the Ohio Territory and planting it in a cemetery. And I thought for a long time, this is the biologist in me, Mike, <laughs> why a cedar of Lebanon, other than a religious sure, significance, right. mm -hmm. why that tree? And I did some reading on the life history of it. It grows to a height of 60 feet and a diameter of 60 feet. Care to guess the diameter of Stonewall Cemetery? Oh, wow. It's 60 feet. He knew exactly, exactly what, what he, he was, was doing. doing. He was shading yeah. all of the grave sites that would be in there. And then he gave it to the President of the United States. Wow. James Monroe. 
as a presidential burial place. That's why it's called the Presidential Acre, even today. And the Department of the Interior kept it in their inventory of properties until 1966, and they turned it back to the county. I, no presidents there. You have such a, uh, uh, just a desire and, and just a love for this. I know at one time, we were at uh, Smeck Farm in Baltimore, and you talked about the development of a village, mm -hmm. an old historic village. Right, yes. And, and some have said, well, you're going to do the same thing that they already do at Slate Run Farm, which is a metro park mm -hmm. that is not in Fairfield County. It's just across the line in Pickaway County, but uh, they do it amazingly well. But it is a slice of time, not a right. period of time. It's a slice of mm -hmm. time, 1880, when that farm would have been in operation. You can go there and experience again. See, they're doing the right thing because they're giving people a taste, a chance right. to do what was done in those days. And believe me, Mike, they mm -hmm. weren't the good old days that you <laughs> like to hear people <laughs> talk about. Life was very, very difficult, mm -hmm. very hard in those days and uh, in some respects still is but uh, they they built a, a working historical farm we're going to build a working historical village but it's going to start in 1797 mm. and it's going to go to 2011 or 12 or 13 mm -hmm. when you walk into our village you're going to be on muddy rutted streets now they won't really be muddy right, but sure. they'll have the ruts in them right. it'll be cast material you'll go to cobblestone brick and then finally modern day uh, hmm. paving materials. A boardwalk down both sides and each one of the buildings of 14 buildings will house what I call a nearly lost artist, a blacksmith. blacksmith. I mean who does that anymore? Mm -hmm. You've got a few people that have those skills but for the most part it's it's dying. Uh, you We're told me at one time there's only one in this area, maybe two in this area if I remember right. Blacksmith? Yes. That's about right. There's only yeah, one or two that you could call to do some of the work that cannot be done in a factory or mm -hmm. China or any place right. else. You, you have to do it by hand. You have to heat that hot iron and you have to pound it. The difference in our village, and people have compared us to Ohio Historicals mm -hmm. Village right. up there that's closed, mm -hmm. the wonderful buildings, beautifully done, absolutely perfect, you know, very period kind of village, and it is a period village. The difference will be if you want to come to my village and learn blacksmithing, you stand right beside the blacksmith. Mm -hmm. You don't stand behind a, a chain or a cable and watch from a, a safe distance. We want you to get your hands dirty. And then what we're really hoping is you'll catch fire. Not right. literally. Sure. <laughs> hopefully. Don't get too close to the fort. But that you'll catch fire with the idea of trying this art. And it mm -hmm. is an art because remember they not only made nails to hold things right. together, which the pioneers would burn their homes to be able to recover those nails because they were so expensive and so hard to get. When they moved, instead of finding a realtor to sell their home, they'd set up fire set it afire and collect the nails after the ashes and everything had cooled. Put those wow. in their wagon and move on. Can you imagine that is, that is what amazing. times were like? Yeah. Um, if people have, they want to volunteer, have questions, website, phone number? We do. We have a website. It's under construction and it's a little challenge to navigate, but you still can. If you read the little tabs and click on those, uh, one of them says old website, so you mm -hmm. can back there. That's where we have all of this history listed with all of our locations, maps of how to get there, all of that, but also the big uh, spot about the festival. Right. This is our first time. We want everybody to come out. It's mostly free. Mm -hmm. Mostly free. Now, Bremen's going to serve lunch from 1 to 2, mm -hmm. or I'm sorry, 12 to 2. And you, even if you miss lunch, you can get down there later to see that artifact right. exhibit I was talking mm -hmm. about and get a fresh apple dumpling, mm -hmm. which is... I've had those. I've you, had those before. Can you witness yeah, that they Those are, are really good. All right. Yeah, that's worth it right there. We'll have some food at Rock yeah. Mill, the hangar dance, as yeah. I was talking about. We'll have artisans at uh, Rock Mill doing various mm -hmm. kinds of of things, uh, games, uh, tours of the gorge and the mill mm. uh, by experts. Lockville Park will be open. Go on Saturday and at 1 and 3 there will be a canaller, a fellow who takes the personage of four people <laughs> just by turning around, changing his hat, opening his shirt, he becomes a different person. You'll want to see that. That is neat. That is neat. Uh, Smack Historical Farm. I could keep going. Got another uh, well, hour? We, we just, I was going to say, we're just about out of time, but I, sure. I do want to, well, we'll get you back on, but I, I, I do want to talk about the upcoming levy um, mm. that is coming for the historical parks. You operate on a basically shoestring budget um, right now, and again, you are the right. only employee right. uh, within the historical parks, but uh, talk just a little bit about the levy, and we're going to go get you back on down the road. But. Great. Okay, thanks. Yeah, the levy's four-tenths of a mill, and I know there are important levies being run by the city, the schools. Uh, the difference between our levy and theirs, and I don't mean this at all as a criticism, please don't take it that mm -hmm. way. We can give back. I mean, they're giving back in terms of services provided and educating our, our children, but 
in this sense, we can bring dollars into the county that aren't here now. Tourism in Ohio accounts for $38 billion a year. If we get our county share, 188th of our county share, that's a half a billion dollars, Mike, hmm. and $50 million in new taxes. Any idea what the county's budget is? <laughs> $34 million a year. If we get $50 million in new taxes, they don't have to ask you for any right. more money. Mayor Smith wouldn't have to ask for money to pave the streets, you know, like the street that we got here on mm -hmm. uh, that's in bad need of that. Uh, it would make such a difference. There would be jobs uh, available in this industry, uh, hospitality, service kinds of things. Uh, yeah, they're probably not going to be the highest paying job, but then on the other end, I don't know if we're going to get a Honda plant here either. But what it will do is help us build community pride, I think. People get back to, to doing things with their families, going out to these parks and having a picnic, some free entertainment, some storytelling, and right. I, could, I could tell some oh, of those I, stories. I know you could tell some stories. Um, uh, musical entertainment, right. folklore, uh, this sort of thing on a Saturday or Sunday, being able to eat family style at a long tavern table in the tavern that will be in the village. Uh, meals provided by local churches, service groups that would come in and do that on a Friday and Saturday night and share with us in those things. Uh, there would be so many things we can sure. do, but if this levy fails, we're out of business. Yeah. The county has told us no more funds. Yeah, we'll we'll get you back on. We're going to do it. We're going to get you back on and talk a little bit more about that. Dave Fay, we appreciate you coming in and, and walking me through building the covered bridge. You did and, very well. I've got a little sticker for Thank you, you very much. I built a covered bridge I today. appreciate that very much. Uh, once again, we do appreciate Dave Fay coming in talking about the uh, Fairfield Historic Parks. And remember, until we meet again, let's make a difference. I can't say enough of how this center influenced me and the benefits that my wife got from it. I thought nobody can take care of her like me, and I knew I had to do something for my family. It's in their hearts that they want to provide the care for the people that deserve it here.